far reaches of the north, upon a canvas of cold, star-filled sky, a symphony of color and cosmic radiation plays through the winter night. It is beautiful and terrifying, silent and cacophonous, colorful and Bible black. It is the Northern Lights, mankind's oldest unsolved mystery. If you listen to them very, very carefully, you can hear the millions of voices trapped within. This is Frozen Frights. Aurora Borealis. Hey there, this is Jeff from the Icebox Radio Theater, jumping in before the show to remind you that we couldn't make these plays. That's from the horror to the comedy to the old-time radio recreations without the help of you, our wonderful listener. Of course, financial assistance is always great, and you can learn more about that at our website. That's iceboxradio.org. Just click on the Support Us link. Or you can just visit our Patreon page at patreon slash radio icebox. But a great and free way to help us out here at the Icebox Radio Theater is to leave a five-star rating of our shows and series wherever you catch your podcasts. Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, one of the millions of podcatchers at the Play or App Stores. It really doesn't matter where you listen, just so long as you leave that five-star rating along with a nice review. That really goes a long way towards growing our audience and helping us make more shows. Thanks for listening to this announcement, and now... On with today's feature presentation. So, do you know why you're here? Carrie, do you know why you're here? No. Well, we can work on that. You are Karen Smith. Go by Carrie. Yes. Formerly of 907th Street. Yeah, uh, formerly? Since the fire. Oh. Yes. You live alone? Yes. 907th Street is the house where you grew up? Yes. Inherited it from your mother? Yes. Nice neighborhood? No. Really? It was once. It's been changing ever since. Ever since what? Nothing. There was a point when the town went into decline. When was that? Uh, I, I don't want to talk about that. Fine, we'll come back to it. Do you work? I process insurance claims. You work at home. Married? What? Ever married? Oh, no. You live in the house alone? Yes. You live alone? Yes. Excuse me. Hmm? Could I ask a question? Go ahead. Am I in trouble? Of course not. You're free to go whenever you'd like. Where am I? You don't remember coming here. I just need to get my bearings. I understand. Carrie, I'll make you a deal. If you answer a few questions for me, I'll not only let you go, I'll give you a ride home. How's that sound? Home? Yes. How's that sound? I don't have a home anymore, you said. All right, to a hotel then. How's how's that sound? Okay, I guess. Let's start then. The fire. What do you remember about the fire? Nothing, really. Take your time. I, uh... Just take your time. I remember being dragged back to the house. Who dragged you? Who dragged you back to the house? I think it was Al. Al? Who's that? Uh, My neighbor. He he was my neighbor. His house was on fire. Al was your neighbor? Yes. And he dragged you to safety? 
No. Come back back here. here. He was trying to drag me back into the house. Back into the fire. Why was he doing that, Carrie? Get back here now. I don't know. Yes, you do. You have to remember. I don't know. Carrie, you were trying to escape from Ow. Now! Why? Why did you want to get away? I don't know. Yes, you do. I don't want to say it. Why not? It's not real if you don't say it. You were running back from Al's house to your own house. You wanted to get away. You were afraid. You were afraid of Al. I don't know. Yes, you do. Why do you keep saying you don't know when you do? I just want to go home. Why did you want to get away from Al? I just want to go home. Carrie, why did you want to get away from Al? I don't know, okay? I don't know. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Why did you want to get away? He... He was going to murder me. How do you know that? Because he's a murderer. He murdered them all. He was dragging you back into the house? Yes. Back into the house. Why do you say it like that? Back into the house. His house. You were in his house, not your own. It's the neighborhood. We're friendly. (sighs) Carrie, do you ever leave your home? Of course. Really? Pizza! Of course I leave my house. Hey, I got medium extra cheese here. I go out all the time. Hey! Do you? Is anybody home? I do. Come on, open up. I don't got all day. I really do. I'm walking away with your pizza. Wait! Thank God. Medium extra cheese comes at $21.95. I left the money there on the table next to the door. What? On the little table next to the door. There's money. Just take it and leave the pizza, please. Why aren't you opening the door? Just take the money and leave the pizza. Fine. Whatever. Hey, there's not enough here. What? There's only a 20. It comes to 21.95. But I had a coupon. 21.95, lady. Come on. Come on, it's only 2 bucks. Fine. Keep the damn pie. We're not delivering to this house anymore, got it? You got a reputation. This address is on a list. Just call Domino's or somebody from now on. Never. No. Why don't you leave the house, Carrie? I don't know. You're agoraphobic, aren't you? No. No, the doctor said... What doctor? He said I wasn't. What doctor, Carrie? Mama took me to see him. What doctor? I don't know. I was little. She said I was a terror. I'd throw tantrums if I had to go to school. I thought you said you went to school. I did. I did. It just wasn't easy. Did you have friends in school, Carrie? Not really. Did you do things? Activities? Band. Clarinet. I hated it. You hated the clarinet? No, that part was fine. It's easy to fake in the orchestra, you know. Blow really quiet and do the fingering and the teacher thinks you're playing. I wasn't, though. I couldn't stand it when I played bad. Bad note on clarinet. It's really loud, you know. You didn't want to be there. In school? No. You wanted to be home? Yes. You always wanted to be home? Yes. The neighborhood... Yes? The neighborhood used to be nice. And that's why you wanted to be home? Yes. But the neighborhood isn't nice anymore? Why did you go next door? Why did you go to the neighbor's house? I don't know. Let's back up a bit. You don't know why you went to Al's house next door? The murderer's house next door? No. Were you curious about him? No. You weren't? No. Because according to my notes, you were obsessed with him. Carrie? Were you obsessed with him? Carrie? Everyone was. Why? Why was everyone obsessed with your next-door neighbor, Al? Because 
he was the Icebox Strangler. Twenty years ago. Six people. People? Women. Victims. Everyone was crazy. My mom was scared she wouldn't let us play outside after dark, even though... Even though what, Carrie? Even though we all knew he was a sex criminal and we were just kids. Sex criminals attack kids sometimes. The Strangler wasn't like that. He liked old women. The papers all said so. Old, lonely women. Did you read a lot about the Strangler back then? I told told you to leave that that newspaper alone! alone. Mom didn't like it. Give you nightmares and then you keep me up all night! She didn't like how interested I was. Are you listening to me? What do you think? I don't know. You don't? Leave that that stuff alone! alone. It's not Not natural. natural! She was worried about me. Worried? How? Worried I was... changing. You know... Changing like most kids do around then. You were only ten. I was... early. Did you have a crush on the Icebox Strangler, Carrie? No, no, not natural. natural! No. Did you ever dream of him taking you away? Not to murder, you understand, but just taking you away, sweeping you up, carrying you off. I guess... I, I don't know. Kids think strange things, don't they, Carrie? Is that one of my questions? No. It's not. So you were there in the house, Al's house. He's chasing you. How did you get away from him? I don't understand. Well, we know you went to his house and we know you searched it. At some point, he must have come home and found you, correct? I guess. Is that correct, Carrie? Is everything I just said correct? I don't know. You don't? Well, yes. Yes, that's how it happened? Yes. He found me there. Who are you? He found me in his house. What did he do? What the hell do you think you're doing? He grabbed at me. What are you doing? I couldn't get away at first. Why couldn't you get away? I was in the basement. There was only one way out. Why were you in the basement, Carrie? I was looking. Who are you? What were you looking for? Evidence. What do you mean? He was tried and convicted. He was sent to prison. He even confessed for a lighter sentence. There was no mystery. He killed those women. What were you looking for? Anything. All right. What did you find? Board. What? I found a board. I don't understand. In the basement. I found a board, a piece of wood, like from a lumberyard. Was it evidence? No. But you found it in the basement? Yes. What was so important about the board, Carrie? I could use it as a weapon. Did you use it as a weapon? Yes. Against Al? Yes, it was all I could find. He had me cornered, cornered in the basement... And it was all I could find. What were you doing in the basement, Carrie? Looking for clues. About the murders? Yes. Did you find any? No. The basement was empty. The whole house was empty. No one had lived there since Al went to prison. Right. So it was empty. Like the neighborhood. Yes. All except the board. The board again? Yes. It was weird. How was the board weird, Carrie? It was... new. Not dirty like it should have been. There was red ink on the end. They mark boards like that at the lumber yard. This board... it could have been brand new. You said this board was the only thing in the basement? Yes. Almost like someone had left it there for you to find. What do you mean? You said it was new. Everything in the house was old. How did a new board get into the basement of an old house? I don't know. Carrie? I don't know. I'm I'm sorry, but I don't. Carrie, you need to rethink that answer. What? That answer. You need to rethink it. You need to consider. I don't understand. You need to consider what happened in the basement. Why the board, the brand new board, was in the basement of an old house. I don't know what you mean. Carrie... 
Did you bring the board with you? No. Then who put it there? I don't want to hurt you, no, 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 no. Who brought the board? I don't, don't want to hurt you, no, 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 no. Stand back. Don't come any closer. What are you doing here? Why you come into my house? Don't come any closer. You're one of those people, aren't you? One of those damn nosy people want to come around the house. Just stay back. I am staying back. You're the one with the club. Trespasser, that's what you are. You come into my home, sneaking around. Stay back. Don't got no right. Don't got no right to come in here. This ain't your property. Just, just stay back. Wait. Not one more step. I know you. I know you. I mean it. Stay right there. Yeah, I know you. You're that mousy girl from next door. Just, just stay there. You and your mom. You lived next door back in the day. She was always giving me the stink eye, and you, you just look scared all the time. Maybe that was me, right? You were scared of me? Or maybe it wasn't. Maybe you were scared of everything. Don't move. Scared of everything. Scared of people. We could have been friends, you and I. I like kids. Never had none of my own, so that would have been nice. Playing dad for a neighbor's kid. Teaching you how to swing a hammer. How to tie knots. Girls should learn that stuff, you know. I had a whole garage of power tools. Could have had you building your own furniture. But that's all gone now. Someone took the tools. Everything's gone. Everything but the memories. The memories and the record. You kept a scrapbook on the Icebox Strangler, didn't you, Gary? I don't confess to nothing. Secret scrapbook, because you knew your mother wouldn't approve. But the record's still there. All in black and white. Lies! Your mother didn't take the newspaper, so you snuck scissors into the public library, stole away to dark corners with copies of the Minneapolis papers, and snipped out articles about the Strangler. Then you put the papers back on the rack. Lies. All of it. Caused quite a controversy at the library. A homeless man was barred for a time because they thought he was doing it. Lies. So you didn't kill those women? Not saying I did. Not saying I didn't. Things happen, you know. Things don't go to plan. Sometimes two people get together. You think it's going to be a nice time, and then a stupid broad says something. What happened? Carrie. I hit him. Ah! He took a step towards me, so I hit him. I hit him hard, and I ran. I ran, and the house was already burning, so I ran out, and he caught me. Ah! And he tried to drag me back into the house. Back into the burning house. That's not true. Weren't your property didn't matter. Why? Why didn't it matter, Carrie? Because he'd abandoned it. Because it was empty. No one was going to know. No one was going to care. There was no one left in the neighborhood to care. Matter to me. No one. So, Al came home. What? You were in the house... While you were searching for clues, Al came home. Yes. Had he been to the house before? No. Had he been to the house since he was arrested? No. But it was empty. What? The house. It was empty. Someone had emptied the house, right? I guess so. Who emptied out the house? Back when it happened, I mean, who emptied out the house? I don't remember. It was a long time ago. Things... Things have a way of just disappearing in this neighborhood. I had tools. I had all kinds of things. Did you take anything? What? From the house. Did you take anything from the house when it all happened? No. Why not? It was right next door. I didn't... I... Yes? I didn't want to. One day I came home from school and there was a big lock on the door. The next day I came home and a truck was driving away from the house. After that I could tell it was empty. Did you look in the windows? Trespasser! No, I could just tell. How? How could you tell, Carrie? I could just tell. The house was empty. People would come, 
look in the windows, but my mother shooed them away. I did the same thing later. What thing? Shoo people away. There were a lot of gawkers early on. Then when the internet started, more people found out about the Strangler. They came and looked. I shooed them away. It was none of their business. Why did you shoo them away? Mother never liked weirdos wandering around the neighborhood. They can get their jollies somewhere else, she used to say. Do you feel that way? They don't come around so much anymore. The weirdos. Why not? Well, the house doesn't stand out so much now. It fits in. Let's go back. Let's go back to the moment you entered the house. Okay. The moment you crossed the threshold. What were you thinking? I don't know. You had to have been thinking something. I, I don't know. Carrie, you lived next to that place your entire life. You are obsessed with the icebox strangler. You have no life beyond him. I work. They've threatened to fire you many times, but they're having a difficult time keeping staff. You are obsessed, and yet you never cross the ten feet of scrub grass and dirt to his door. Not before now. I told you it was locked. The hinges broke years ago. Most of the ground floor windows are broken, too. You could have walked into that house whenever you wished. Why now? I don't know. Carrie, you are a shut-in. You are a person with no life outside the stained and peeling walls of your own house. You have lived next door to the Icebox Strangler for twenty years. He has been safely locked up for seventeen of those years. No one is protecting his house. No one would care if you went inside. But for seventeen years, you didn't. Why did you... today? The wasps. What? I said... The wasps. What wasps? There are wasps. Paper wasps in Al's house. All right, what is that? I don't want to talk about this. I think we should. No. Carrie, we have to understand why you went into Al's house after all these years. Why? We have to understand. If these wasps had something to do with that, we have to understand. Why? Because our conversation cannot end until we understand. This interview cannot end until it is concluded, until there is a conclusion. We must reach the conclusion, Carrie. We must. My bedroom is upstairs. I can look out my window right across at the house. It's, it's right there. The two houses, they're the same height, so my bedroom is lined up with a room in Al's house across the way. 20 feet in the air, but just 10 feet apart. That room, I think it's a bedroom. It has a broken window. Just inside the window, up on the ceiling, there's a wasp's nest. The wasps can fly in and out the broken window, but they're still protected from the rain. It's really smart, you know? They're really smart. What about the wasps, Carrie? They fly close sometimes. Does it bother you? Only in the summer. It's hot upstairs, and I have to keep my window open. Sometimes they land on the screen. Well, some of the wasps are really big. It's like a bird landing there. The screen rattles like someone hit it with a stone. Once I was just waking up, and I saw one hanging there, it took off, and for a second I thought it was inside the screen. I screamed, and, and I screamed... I couldn't sleep the rest of the night. Why are you so afraid of wasps? They sting. They sting, and, and they sting, and they don't die like a honeybee. They, they can keep on stinging. But they're small. I've always been afraid of them. Why? I've always been afraid of them. Always. Tell me more about the wasps. There's nothing to tell. I think there is. Why did you go into his house? Was it the wasps? Did you want to destroy them? I guess... I don't... I wanted them to leave me alone. Had they ever bothered you before? Just having them there bothers me. So you went into the house to destroy the wasp's nest. You wanted them to go away. I don't... I'm not sure. Cross the threshold with me, Carrie. What? Cross the threshold with me. 
Go back in your memory. Think about standing at Owl's door. Think about when you first entered the house, when you first crossed that threshold. Can you do that? I don't know. I think you can, Carrie. I think you can go back. No, I I can't. Just go back. I can't. You're standing on the porch. No. You've put your hand on the doorknob. Please, no. You're turning the knob and... No! What? What is it? I didn't turn the knob. Go on. I didn't turn the knob because the door was ajar. I didn't turn the knob because the door was already open. I didn't have to turn it. Carrie, was there a light on in the house? Yes. Was Al already inside? Yes. You saw him enter? You saw him come up to the house and go inside? Yes. Carrie, why did you follow Al into his house? I don't know. Why did you follow Al into his house? I don't know! Yes, you do. You have to. People don't change, Carrie. People are creatures of habit. They have rules. Rules for everything. They have rules for which products to buy, what food to eat, what programs and videos to watch. Some people can break rules. You are not one of those people, Carrie. You don't break. You persevere. You keep going in the same direction like a train. Who are you? I ask the questions here. I just want to know who you are. What is this place? Why are you asking me all these questions? To ascertain the situation. Why? Why is it so important? You really don't know, do you? I'm not... I don't... Why did you go into Al's house, Carrie? The wasps. They're full of poison. What? Poison. They're full of poison. Go on. You can tolerate a lot of poison, you know. If you take it in small enough doses, you can build up an immunity. That's interesting. Do you have an immunity, Carrie? No. I feel every sting. Why don't you start from the beginning and tell me what happened? Nothing. What? Nothing happened. Nothing has happened for years. He killed it. Who? Al? He was the icebox strangler. Killed it all. He killed six women. He killed more than that. And he didn't pay. So you wanted him to pay? He has to pay. You can't kill and not pay the price. What's the price, Carrie? Death by fire. Eternally burn. You set fire to the house? Yes. You went to the basement with armfuls of wood? Yes. You started the fire. It has to burn. Al, the wasps, everything has to burn. Full of poison. Like a cancer. Right. Right. You get it, like a cancer. You burn out cancer, right? Burn it out of you? That's right, Carrie. You do. That house needed to burn. It would be safe then, wouldn't it? Yes. That's it. That's that's right. You set the fire. I had to. That's arson, Carrie. I'll confess. I'll go to jail. Do you think you're a hero? No. I'm just doing what anyone would. Saving your hometown from... What? From him. He's dead, Carrie. What? Al. He's dead. He died in prison. Years ago. No, no, no. He was an old man when he committed his crimes. Prison life is hard. Do you think he could have survived? I saw him. No, you didn't. You couldn't have. I know I saw him. Carrie, you set a fire that burned down Al's house and yours and damaged another abandoned place next door. No. The fire department was short-staffed, so they had to focus on your house. It was the only one listed as occupied. No, that's not right. But you weren't home, were you? You were next door in the basement of Al's house. Looking for clues. Right. Looking for clues. The wood you brought was dry. There was no ventilation in the basement. The smoke had nowhere to go. Did you know, Carrie, that most people who die in fires don't burn? 
It's the smoke that gets them. I didn't know that. Eventually, of course, the rafters in the basement ceiling caught, then the walls and the floors upstairs. It was dry like kindling. It all came crashing down. I got out. There was no one on the block to call it in. All those abandoned houses. But I got out. It was dumb luck that the fire station was only two blocks away. A firefighter saw the smoke. Al's house was a total loss. Your house was a total loss, despite their best efforts. You don't understand. I got out. They're pouring water on the embers right now. The basement is full of charred wood and ash. I got out. Well, I believe I promised you a ride to a hotel. I... I think I'd like to continue here. No, Carrie. You're done here. Hello? Hello? I'm not done. I'd I'd like to continue my testimony. Please? You have been listening to Vacant, part of the Icebox Radio Theater series Frozen Frights, Aurora Borealis. Your cast featured Trelawney Irwin as Carrie, Jeffrey Adams as the narrator, and Justin Kapla was Al. Other voices provided by the talented cast. Story, script, and direction by Jeffrey Adams, who also created the sound design. Some sound effects by The Freesound Project at freesound.org. This program copyright 2020 by the Icebox Radio Theater, which is solely responsible for its content. Learn more at iceboxradio.org. The Icebox Radio Theater's Frozen Frights, Aurora Borealis, is made possible in part by the voters of Minnesota through a grant from the Arrowhead Regional Arts Council thanks to a legislative appropriation from the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund.